Good morning, friends. Um, so, just really quickly, <laughs> um, coronavirus, <laughs> still a thing. And, um, you know, since we reopened on June 1st, we've been having to make all kinds of adjustments according to what's going on out there. And I think that every time that we've made adjustments, we've assumed or maybe hoped, I don't know, that things would get better and that like we were going to be able to like lighten restrictions rather than add more restrictions. But that's just not the case. I think it's like really obvious that it's getting worse and not better, particularly here in Florida. And so all of that is to say that starting Monday here, all masks all the time. So if you're not sure if you're going to be able to do it, since it is going to be required starting Monday, it might be just like a smart idea sometime now or over the weekend to just try it and see so that you don't come and like try to like practice and doesn't go well or whatever. Then you'll know ahead of time. And then now you still have today and Saturday and Sunday to be like, you know what, it's not working. Finish your practice without the mask and then you know that it's not working. Um, we will, obviously, we have this great virtual product. I know it's not the same to practice at home, but um, all of us in our ways have to figure out how can we continue to live our lives and practice, stay sane and stay safe, and whatever those balances are within the containers that we have. And again, starting Monday, this container is going to ask you to wear your mask all of the time. And Really for us, it was just that we had a couple of employees who weren't feeling well, and we're really lucky that all of their tests have come back negative. But um, it made us have to sit with, like, how would we feel and what would that look like if we felt like it was possible they got sick in our place and it didn't feel good and it's not worth it to us. So same with you guys. We've just been so lucky. No one's gotten sick here. And, it, and a lot of that is probably because of the way we do it. But that doubt that we might have if somebody did get sick that it might have happened here was enough to make us change our policies. So as always, thank you guys so much for your patience and your grace and your support as we continue to have to make really hard decisions every single day. All right. And done. Moving on to power yoga. We're going to start on our knees today, kneeling. And so two things. One, um, if it's not comfortable for your knees because it's too much flexion, you can put a block under your bum. But either way, we're going to tuck the toes under in a toe crunch, crunch position. So this, since I just got you into your heads, I'm going to get you right the fuck out by bringing all of your brain right into your toes. So tuck the toes under and sit back on your heels. Again, a block on any level can take a little bit of that weight for you. Even here in toe crunch, I can put the block on its highest setting and relieve a little bit of that extension in the toes. And as best you can, settle into some stillness here and see if you can start to make that shift out of thinking and into feeling. And thank God for these practices that get us into our bodies because right now with so much heavy stuff to think about, it's good to get grounded and embodied and give the mind a rest. Rest and recovery being at least as important as all of the hard work we do, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, all work needs to be met by some amount of rest. <sighs> And if just the breath and the stillness aren't working to get you out of your head, the toe crunch might. Last three. <laughs> Two. Oh, yeah, one. Lean forward to hands and knees and pitter-patter out the toes behind you. And then on your hands and knees, come down to the forearms. And just instead of on the hands and knees, on the forearms and knees, cat-cow. A 
awareness in the body, noticing where you're pulling energy from, where energy might feel stuck. Equally important are the things that feel good and the things that feel a little uncomfortable. There's lessons in all of that. And then find a neutral spine here on your forearms and energize the forearms down enough that you make space between the shoulder blades and then push your knees down so that you feel your low belly activate a bit and then bring your right hand behind your head and if that's already hard to do you can take your left forearm and put it on a diagonal so your hands in front of your face just gives you a little bit more stable of a base right fingertips behind the head inhale open chest to the right right elbow high Exhale, right elbow to left elbow for five. Open and close four. Three, two, and switch. Right elbow down, right forearm down. Reset your shoulder blades and your pelvis. Left hand behind the head, open. And close five. Keep energizing the right forearm down. Three. Two. And one. Bring the left forearm down and bring your both forearms like about halfway back towards your knees. We're going to do the same thing, but now we're like in a tighter little ball. Right fingertips behind head. Just like slightly towards cat, inhale, open. Right elbow to left elbow. Five. Four. Three. Two. And switch. Reset and begin. Five. Four. This is medicinal movement for most bodies right now. Two and one. Good. Crawl your forearms forward. Tuck your toes and lift your hips for dolphin. Last breath. Downward facing dog. From down dog, roll forward to plank pose. And then if you want to put your knees down for this next exercise, you certainly could. We're going to try to keep the whole body in a plank position, but retract and protract the shoulder blades. So as you sink your chest towards the floor, shoulder blades come together. As you push your chest away from the floor, shoulder blades spread apart. Let's do a few repetitions of that. At the same time, think about externally rotating your upper arm bones. So that looks like spinning the eyes of your elbows forward and hugging the triceps in towards your sides. And then the next time you come more towards that protracted space, Keep that and don't let it go as you lift your hips up and back to down dog. And then just flow forward between plank and downward facing dog a couple times, trying not to let go of the protraction and the external rotation. So you're flossing out your shoulder joints. So this morning was the first time, but I'm, I'm going to start to work out with Dr. Lance on Friday mornings before this class. So you guys are going to get to reap the rewards of that a little bit. I'm going to get to bring some of his sweet knowledge into this practice, which is very exciting. Good. One more time. And then next time the hips come high to down dog, step the feet together, lift the right leg long. And then see if with the right leg up, you can tuck your tail and lift the tail like cat cow. Good. 
Good, one more time like cow, think back bend. And then as you go into the cat shape, bring your right knee forward, step your right foot in between your hands and come up to crescent lunge. And then bend your back knee a little bit so you can pull your pubic bones up towards your navel. And then bend the back knee a lot and straighten without letting the tuck of the tail go. Just back and forth like that a few times. Next time you come up, open up Warrior Two. And in Warrior Two, let's floss the hips a little bit, but first let's set the legs. So ground really strong into the right foot. You might feel like your right upper inner thigh engaged. That's what it feels like to me. And then squeeze your left leg glute a little bit. And then try to keep your pelvis and your legs right where they are and just shift forward and back here. Or I guess it's kind of side to side. <laughs> Can you control the movement from your core, from your back and your belly and your sides? And the next time you reach forward, flip the right palm and reach all the way back, reverse your warrior. And to really drive this shape home, let's sink deeper into the right foot and then push it down without letting the legs straighten and reach the right fingertips away. Three, two, one, plank pose on the hands. Think of that space that's slightly towards protraction, so spread between the shoulder blades. Notice if your hips or your belly are sinking towards the floor. Can you push the toes and hands down so it feels like your body is floating up away from the floor with engagement through the chest and the belly and the thighs? One more inhale. All the way down to your belly. Exhale. Reach your arms straight long overhead and lengthen out your legs behind you. Let's see if we can get a bit taller. Energize your pubic bones down. Pull your belly up away from the floor and then press the pinky sides of your hands down as your palms face each other. Conditioning Shalabhasan. And then relax and see if you can walk your pelvis back further like you've made some space on the front side of your body. You've gotten taller. Pubic bones down. Belly lifts up. Pinky sides of the hands press down. And then also imagine that as you press the pinky sides of your hands down, pubic bones down, and float the belly, can you slide the pinkies forward just slightly? Yeah. Don't get, give up that downward pressure. Just also slide them forward just a little bit. And release. Now everything up. Everything up off the ground. Yeah. Nice. Can you still lift your belly up away from the floor? Can you direct most of the energy of the shape to the space in your mid-back, like the bra line or the bro line? Beautiful. Let it go. Your way back to downward facing dog. Just to check in one time, roll forward to plank and then back to down dog. Find your protraction and your external rotation. And then as you lift the hips back, feet together, left leg long. And with the left leg lifted, can you find something like the cat cow? And one more inhale to cow type shape. And then as you exhale into cat type shape, bring the left knee forward, step the foot between the hands, and come on up. Super good. Bend the right knee just enough that you can pull the pubic bones up towards the navel, toning through the belly, and then keep that as you lower and lift. So as the knee comes towards the floor, it feels like more quad stretch, not less.
Really good awareness, guys. Next time you lift up, open up, warrior two. Let's set the legs, bend a little deeper into the left knee, and then energize the left foot down. For me, that feels like my thigh spins back, and I get like a little upper inner thigh activation, and then a little squeeze of the right leg glute, which you can also find sometimes just by pushing the foot down, and then set all that and forget it, and shift a little forward and back. So sometimes the tough part is the parts that you're trying not to move. Awesome. And next time you reach forward, flip the left palm and reach all the way back. Reverse your warrior. Bend even a little deeper into the left foot and then push it down nice and strong as you reach the left fingertips away. Just notice if you're holding your breath or holding tension. One more inhale. Exhale, plank. And all the way down to the belly. Arms forward, legs back, pinky sides down. One time conditioning Shalabhasan, pubic bones down, belly lifts up, pinky sides press down and slide slightly forward, and then everything up. Keep the energy of the belly lifting away from the floor. And then here's the really tricky part for this next movement is to keep the weight in the pelvis even. So you have two bony protrusions on either side of your hips. Can you keep the weight even as you tap the right pinky and left toes down and lift them up? Left pinky, right toes, and up. Good. So try to return to center and then do one side versus like the full swimming, which is also totally a legitimate movement. And we will get to that next. But for now, super pelvis control. One side, whoop, and the other last five, three, Two, sometimes it's just like the exercise for your brain, just doing it like the way that you're not used to and release. Do what you gotta do to let that go and let's meet back in downward dog. One more breath. And step or float your feet forward and wide. Sink your hips and lift your chest up. Reach your fingertips forward for like a catcher's stance. And then bring your left hand to your ribs. And then see if you can exhale as you pull the ribs down towards your hip points without letting the shoulders round forward. So can you pull the ribs together and down without letting the shoulders round forward. Keep your left hand on your ribs and see if you, how far you can reach your right fingertips up without letting them loose. And then switch. Right hand holds the ribs accountable as we try to reach the left arm up. Maybe sit a little deeper and switch. Super good. Now let's try to keep them pinned. Left arm stays, right arm joins. Last five. Energize the hands towards each other. Four. Try to keep the shoulders out of the ears. Three. Lots of focus on the ribs. I'm like shaking there. Two. One. Fold forward. Don't mind if I do. Bend your left knee a lot. Ground your left hand. Reach your right fingertips high. Once you're in it, push the right foot. The right leg is straightish. Right foot down and open the chest a little more. 
Good, and switch. Right knee bends a lot, right hand down, left leg works towards straight as the left arms open. Notice I said working towards, doesn't have to be straight. And once you're in the twist, push the left foot down and open. Good, release, left hand down, step back and flow your own way. All the way to downward dog. Any way you want to get there is cool. Hmm. All right, feet together, right leg long. Think about the cow shape, and then think about the cat shape as you step the right foot through. Nice, that looks great. Come on up to crescent pose, and right away open to warrior two. This time take your fingertips behind your head, and let's think about doing oblique crunches, again, without letting any rounding forward. The obliques do that also, but we can control them so that we just do lateral flexion and extension. So the right foot's forward. We're going to engage the right obliques to bring the right knee toward, or the right elbow towards the right knee. Now notice what happens when you move from the obliques rather than trying to take the right elbow to the knee. When you really move from the obliques, you're probably not going to get the right elbow to the knee, but there's a lot more length happening in the left side and a lot more engagement in the side ribs. And then let's take it like reverse warrior style and go the other way. Use the left obliques to lift the right elbow and notice the feeling in the right side versus like kind of when you usually just collapse back into reverse warrior. Just go back and forth a couple of times. And this is really about creating some memory in your muscle about what that can feel like if you control it from your center versus letting the arms sort of be the bosses of the movement. And then keep your hands behind your head. Next time you come into that right oblique shape, Step off your left leg like flying warrior, but try to keep your hands behind your head. It's a lot harder for the balance. Can you gently push your head back into your hands if you are stable? Three, two, squat, kundalini. Left knee tucks down behind the right knee, left hand down, right arm high. Push the right foot down and open more through the chest, like the twist we did when we were standing. You've got three more breaths if you want to work the legs a little straighter. Do that, but just like in the other shapes, don't let the limbs bully the torso. Let the torso be the boss in control, the piece that you're more determined to have be in place. Good, and then squat all the way back down into your tight little ball and then open up to triangle pose. So right hand's gonna stay connected to the right foot or floor somewhere. Left foot steps back and get to peel open. Awesome, and then in triangle pose, push your right foot down really strong to stand up. And then let your right hand come down towards your inner right thigh. So instead of like this, we're going to slide the right hand down the leg as we come towards triangle and let the right hand just slide up the inside of the right leg as we stand up. And just do some repetitions of that. And can you control it from your belly, from your core, from the same muscles we just warmed up in the warrior two shape doing the side crunching? Except now this is a little bit more of a hinge movement. Good, half moon pose. Next time the right hand slides down the right leg, step forward. And just repeating similar shapes, inhale half moon. Exhale, wrap down into the kundalini shape. For three, inhale, open half moon. Exhale, squat down into the kundalini shape. Two, last one, inhale half moon. Exhale, squat down into the kundalini shape. Float your hands to prayer if you can, and send your left leg back. So it's kind of like a bent knee standing split 
that's balancing. Somebody probably named this, and you know I didn't think of it, but I don't know the name. And then let it go. Both hands down, step left toes down, right toes back, plank pose, hold. Stay steady, hold. Stay steady, one more inhale all the way down to your belly. This time, skydiver style, goal post arms, feet open as wide as your mat, bend your knees. Let's start with the lower body, press the pubic bones down, pull the belly up away from the floor, and just lift the thighs. And is it possible for you to isolate the movement to the lower body, or is there tension in your neck? How much can you let the upper body relax and just focus the effort where you're trying to lift? Yeah, really nice. Relax that for just a second. And then pubic bones down, belly lifts up. Keep the thighs heavy but, and keep the elbows pinned down, but bring the elbows straight out from your shoulders. So we must side your elbows forward so that you're really in like, yeah. And then put the elbows down and pick the forearms up. Yeah, I know. If they don't want to move, just keep trying. Elbows down, forearms up. I know it sounds crazy, but you're, all you're doing is trying to externally rotate your upper arm bone. Yelena, slide your elbows forward so you're like more of like a goal post shape. Yeah. Awesome. Let that go. Everything relaxes. Remember those two feelings and don't forget about them as you bring everything up for skydiver. Pubic bones down, belly lifts away from the floor, that external rotation, and then also the elbows can lift, the chest can lift, the head can come up. Now that you're up, see if you can, again, find that external rotation. Like, can you bring your elbows lower and lift your forearms higher? It's not the same as, like, lifting the wings higher. It's more of, like, you're just rotating the upper arm bone. Belly lifting away from the floor, trying to move from the bra line, bro line, whatever you want to call it, that mid-rib section. One more inhale. Tough work. And relax. Okay. <sighs> Woo! Okay, so push up the hands and knees and sit back on your heels for a second. I just want to like, for, just from observing the room, I just want to make, I know that sometimes like your mind and your body are not on the same page, so maybe your mind was there, but the bodies weren't, but I just want to show that when I say to lift the forearms higher than the elbows, I don't, this is what I saw happen. But what we're looking for is this rotation of the upper arm bone, and you're going to feel it here. So we'll do it again next round. Down dog. We got a whole another side to do and we'll try again. <laughs> Hopefully you guys could see that at home. Did that? Yeah, cool. Thanks, Liz. All right, down dogs. Lift your left leg long. Think about the cow shape and then think about the cat shape as you bring your left foot forward and step. Come on up. Crescent pose, and right away open up warrior two. Good, hands behind the head, and we're trying to use our side bodies to bring the left elbow towards the left knee, and we're lifting the left ribs in, so we're probably not going to touch, to be real, just making space in the right side, and then switch. This probably feels really different from how your like, side angles and reverse warriors usually feel, and that's a good thing. Just training some different ways to do it. You might feel it in your hips even. You feel it in your hips a little bit? I do. And then really tough balance, so focus up. Next time left elbow comes towards left knee, try to step into like a flying warrior, but keep the hands behind the head. Last three, two, one. Squat it all the way down to kundalini shape. Ground the right hand, reach the left fingertips high to twist. Once you're in the twist, power the left foot down to get that feeling of 
energetic gravitational bounce back. Like you're now pulling energy up away from the floor by pushing down through your foot. It's like a little rebound effect. And then three more breaths. You can open the legs a little straighter or not. Good, last inhale. Exhale, wrap it back down into that coil shape and then open up to triangle pose. And then you can remember how we did it last time. So we're gonna let the left hand just slide up the left leg as we use the right side obliques to stand us up. Slowly slide the left hand down towards the left foot just until your range of motion stops you. Like you should be able to keep a little engagement in the right glute and then stand it up. Good, a few more repetitions of that. Training this like side extension with straighter legs in more of like a hip hinge kind of a situation. I'm just talking a lot, I'm thirsty. Whew. Super good. Next time the left hand slides down towards the left foot, half moon. Inhale, squat down. We've got three repetitions of this before we move on. Inhale, open, half moon. Exhale, wrap it down. That's two. Last one, open. And close it down. If you can, float your hands to prayer. Keep your torso kind of low on the left leg and see if you can extend the right leg high. It's like a bent knee balancing standing split. And then let it go. Hands down, step back to plank and hold. You can maybe practice in your plank pose, keeping your pelvis really still while you shift the weight from one foot to the other. That's good, a good practice. You don't have to lift the foot, but you're just seeing what has to turn on to keep the pelvis still as you remove weight from one foot, and then that means that more weight has to go into the other foot. Super good, lower all the way down to your belly and set up for skydiver. So open up the feet as wide as your mat and bend your knees. Pin the pubic bones down, pull the belly away from the floor, check in with your pelvis and the weight on your two hip points and only lift your right thigh without letting the weight in your two hip points change. Usually what happens is as we lift the leg, the weight changes. And then once we're up, we adjust. So bring the right leg down now. Check in. Pubic bones down, the two ASIS down evenly, belly kind of floating up, left leg lifts. Okay, so if the weight moved as we lifted, now we try to adjust to make it even. And then bring the left leg down. And we're going to do that one more time each side, but this time try not to let the shift happen so that then you're adjusting once you're up. Try to keep it the whole time. Uh-huh, and then left side. Nice, let both thighs be heavy, but the pubic bones are still down and the belly's floating up and the elbows are straight out from your shoulders. Lift the forearms. Get, try to get the feeling of what works to isolate the external rotation. All right, everybody up, elbows up, chest up, head up, thighs up, belly up. And then can you spin the upper arm bones while you're here even? Uh 
Let's then let it go. Phew. Anyway, you want to get to down dog, it's fine with me. One more breath. Hmm. You step or jump your feet wide. Mm-hmm. And then sink the hips and lift the chest. Arms reach forward into that catcher stance. Pull the belly back. You'll feel the weight shift back into the heels. And then bend your elbows back and reach your fingers forward and try not to let your ribs move. Same kind of, we're looking for that same kind of protraction and retraction that we did in plank earlier, but what's really hard is to not let the whole spine do the cat-cow, right? especially since we're so used to the cat-cow in yoga. And then just pull the left elbow back and rotate your right fingertips forward. And switch. So we're like getting to work some nice stuff in the shoulders and the spine that's not too difficult, but that's really medicinal. But we're the work in the legs <laughs> while we're here. We're asking the legs to be the power portion and the upper body's being the gentle portion of class. The functional. Awesome, almost there. Last time, last time the left elbow pulls back and the right fingertips come forward. Reach the right fingertips overhead and back down. Five. Four. So we're in a twist. Three. Two, one, switch sides. Right elbow pulls back, left fingertips reach forward. So we're totally in a twist. And then left fingertips high and down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Back to center, both arms high, inhale. Let it go, fold forward, exhale. Inhale, nice long spine. Exhale, crow pose if you want to, or any other thing. I'll meet you in plank pose. So if you are gonna jump the feet back, you land with bent elbows and then push yourself up to plank and then come down to your forearms. All of this is to eventually get us into Sphinx so we can stretch the quads, but we like to be creative about how we get there. So when you're ready, hips down, Sphinx pose for half Bakasa and left forearm comes across, right knee bends. We are sitting in that little chair position for a long time, so let's free the quadriceps and hip flexors before we move back into our flow. If you need more, Energize the pubic bones down. Roll the right hip point back down. And switch sides. Nice, let it go. Round the upper back like cat, tuck the toes, float the hips, forearm plank. Walk the feet in, couple of footprints towards the elbows, dolphin pose. And we've been doing all kinds of stuff. You're plenty warm to play. You can do dolphin push-ups, hold dolphin. You could go back to forearm plank and hang there. It's your practice. We've got five breaths or so.
Awesome. Downward facing dog. Down dog. Feet together. Lift the right leg. Think about the cow. And then think about the cat as you step the foot through. Crescent lunge. Warrior two. Hands behind the head. Oblique crunch right. Oblique crunch left. Oblique crunch right into flying warrior. Step off the left leg. One more big inhale. Exhale, squat down for your twist. Left hand plants. Right fingertips rise. Three breaths to express. Good. Coil back down so you wrap it up tight and then open it up to triangle pose. Set your legs. Energize the feet down. Then push into the right foot. Use your left side to lift yourself up as you slide the right hand up the right leg. Good. A few more times. Imagine there's something heavy in your left hand. And next time the right hand comes down towards the floor, take it into half moon. And then in half moon pose, you can imagine that you have something heavy in your left hand. And bring your left elbow towards your back like we did in that chair kind of shape. Bend your left elbow and then lift the left elbow and bring the left hand towards the floor. Keep the hips open and the left leg open, but bring the left shoulder towards the floor. Like you're doing a row now, pull the left hand up towards the shoulder and then straighten it towards the ceiling. So we're just not taking the legs with us, but we're doing the same kind of action as when we did the kundalini to the, to the half moon, right? We're just only, we're leaving the pelvis and we're only doing it with the upper body. Good, next time you go to bring the left hand down, wrap it all down, let the pelvis come, tight little ball kundalini. And this time as you straighten up, take it into warrior three. So straighten out the legs, but we're gonna, Instead of tipping the chest down, find a level body to the ground. Right leg nice and straight. Hands at prayer is good. Arms like goalposts a little tougher. Arms reaching forward even harder. Last three. Two. We're standing up on one. Lift the left knee a lot. And then switch left foot down. Hug the right knee in. That was a lot on the right leg. So we'll do some standing balance, but we'll get off the right leg. Hug the right knee into chest. Hug it out to the side ribs. Hug it into the chest. Hug it into the side ribs. So I'm just giving some love first. Next time you hug into center, let the hands go reach the arms high. And pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Out to the side. Five four, three, two, one. Back to center. Lift, straighten the leg. Three, two, one. Bend the knee. Lower, lift to the side. Straighten the leg. Three, two, one. Back to center. Lift and release. Right foot meets the left. Fold forward. Salute the sun. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, flow your own way to downward facing dog. Good. 
Awesome. Down dog. Feet together. Lift the left leg. Think about the cow. Step the foot as you think about the cat. Rise and shine. Open warrior two. Hands behind the head. Left side oblique crunch. Right side oblique crunch. Left side oblique crunch into the flying warrior shape. Good. Squat it on down. Right knee tucks in. Ground the right hand. Left arm high. Three breaths to express this shape. Then wrap it all the way down, tight little ball, and then open it up to triangle pose. Set the legs nice and strong, and then use your right side and your left foot energizing down to stand it up. Good, do a few repetitions. Imagine you're holding something heavy in your right hand. That you're pushing up towards the ceiling. Next time the left hand slides down towards the left foot, keep your heavy object in your right hand and step into half moon. Now imagine how you'd have to control that heavy object as you bring it down towards your shoulder and then down towards the floor, rotating through the ribs and the rib cage, but not through the hips. And, and you would, it, if you were in the loaded yoga class at the athletic company, which by the way is sometimes streaming and also included in your yoga membership, you would have a dumbbell in your, in your right hand doing this. Awesome. Next time, right hand is coming down. Wrap it all down into the kundalini shape, but this time as you blossom out, it's warrior three. Good. Stand up. Lift your right knee a bunch. And then switch legs. Right foot down. Hug your left knee into your chest. Give it a squeeze. And bring it out to the side ribs. Give it a squeeze. You're pushing the right foot down and reaching tall through crown of the head. Good. Bring it back to center. Reach the arms up, though, and we pulse. Five, four, three, two, one to the left. Five, four, three, two, one to center. Lift the knee, straighten the leg. Three, two, one. One, bend the knee out to the side, lift, straighten three, two, one, bend the knee back to the center, lift the knee and put the foot down, fold forward. Salute the sun, inhale long spine, exhale, flow your own way to downward facing dog. Down dog, take a breath. And then step, walk, or float through. Sit down. Lean left and fold your right leg back. Now we're doing half bakasan, but upright. So this is Trianga Mukhekapad if we fold forward, or Ardha Virasan if we go back. We're going to go back first. I just want to give the option to take the left leg into like a tree shape. It just feels good. And then lean back into your hands, pick up your bum, and tuck your tail under a lot to get a stretch in the front of the right leg. And then that might be enough, or you might do the same thing back on your forearms. Tuck the tail under, get a nice stretch in the front of the right leg.
And come on up. Lean a little left to swing the right leg forward. Massage a bit around the knee. And then energize the left knee down and back to fold over the right leg. Option to take the left arm to the outside of the right leg to really lengthen through the left side. And what you can even do is if you can get your left wrist on the outside of your right leg somewhere, you can push those two points into each other to really stretch your left lat. Like an active stretch of the left lat. That feels like super good in my body. And like everything I say, take it or leave it. <laughs> if it's good for you, it's great. If it's not good for you, hopefully you can find something else that is. And look ahead and lengthen and release to switch sides. Bend the right knee if you're doing the tree shape thing that I'm offering and then fold the left leg back, move the calf meat out of the way. Lean back into your hands, pick up your bum, tuck the tail under a lot. And if you need more, back onto the forearm, same thing. Last breath. Come on up, lean right, release the left leg forward, give a little love around the left knee. And then energize the right knee down and back to fold over the left leg. Bring the right arm to the outside of the left leg somewhere. And if it felt good for you before, push the right hand and left leg into each other to create space in the right side. Inhale, look ahead and lengthen. And exhale to release. Bend both knees with your feet flat on the floor and roll down onto your back. Take a minute for yourself and then settle into stillness. So whatever still shape you took or you're taking, start to settle into that. Take a big breath in and hold it for a moment. As you hold that breath, let your body, your face relax. And then from that super, super relaxed place, maybe take another sip of air in and then let it out as slowly as you can. And as it's slowly melting out of you, imagine your whole body becoming like a puddle.
Here's your open invitation to either stay or to move. Should you happen to find yourself in a seat, sit tall and proud. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to heart. One ohm, inhale. Thanks, y'all. Namaste.